once we're gone. Please stand by. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the BMC BPPM 9.0 Admin Integrations Webinar. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn things over to Mr. Randy Knob. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Kellyanne. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome again to our BPPM Best Practice Webinar Series. Today, we're going to be talking about cloud management best practices or cloud operations. You may have um, heard these two terms before. Um, a couple housekeeping items. Um, as always, again, this uh, is being recorded. We will be handling Q&A th exclusively through the Q&A window in WebEx. There will be no audible questions. We will be answering these in real time, uh, hopefully getting through all of them or as much as we can. And for the ones that we don't get to during the session, we will answer those offline and post not only the WebEx recording, the PowerPoint, but the Q&A on the BMC community site um, afterwards as well. Again, um, make sure that you check out the community site. It's got all of the previous best practices there um, as recordings and content. Um, and again, we have uh, Mr. Hudson Meeks as our presenter today, and I will turn it over to Hudson. Thank you very much, Randy. Uh, again, today this webinar session is focused on BPPM and using BPPM to manage and monitor a cloud environment. Um, legal notice here, this is intended for, you know, folks uh, that are in interacting with BMC already, and we request that we don't share this with third parties and so forth. Um, as typical with our webinar sessions, we consider these sessions to be basically first-level type training. It's very focused on best practice versus how-to. Best practice meaning you can implement the product in one way versus another. Um, you know, which, which way is best, which way should you implement it. Where how-to provides detailed information and instructions on how to actually do an implementation. Um, in this session, you will get a little bit more information on how the product works um, and, and a little bit of discussion on um, cloud environments themselves so that you have a better understanding of, of how BPPM fits into that. We're going to cover core BPPM components. We're not getting into um, uh, uh, side components, so to speak, such as maybe TMR and other pieces that are part of the BPPM platform. Um, this does not address every possible scenario. That would just be impossible to, to cover in an hour and a half. And it is advantageous if you have basic knowledge of BPPM before viewing these videos and or attending the webinar sessions. But if you don't, that's perfectly okay. Please stay, um, stay on and, and, and watch, watch the video and or attend the session as you're, you're watching now. Um, our agenda today, we'll have a quick review of where the webinar materials are um, provided out on BMC's website. We get a lot of questions around that, so we're just providing that up front. We'll talk about BBPM cloud management capabilities at a very high level first, just a one, one slide on that. Um, a short discussion on some cloud terminology, and then we'll dive into two main um, cloud management components. This would be BMC's cloud lifecycle management component and how BPPM works with it. Then we'll also move on from there and talk about uh, virtual cloud and virtual cloud director and how BMC's BPPM solution interacts with uh, vCloud, basically. And we've got a discussion here on managing dynamic entities. Quite obviously, in a cloud environment, um, you may have servers come and go rapidly, um, and, and it's, it's a very dynamic, changing environment for most cloud um, environments. And we, we have to think about things there and deal with that appropriately. Um, and then we've got a, a few slides on general BPPM cloud recommendations, irrespective of what type of uh, cloud environment from a technology perspective we're managing and monitoring. Um, and then a short discussion on, on um, mapping cloud constructs, um, so you have an understanding of how constructs from the BMC CLM solution map into uh, the BPPM solution. Um, and then a, a couple of slides on cloud infrastructure monitoring. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So our webinar materials, where are they provided? Uh, we've done webinars on BPPM 8.6 best practices, and you can see the link for that there. And for the uh, BPPM 9.0, 
Um, that's the, the link that you see for there is for 9.0, and this is the last one for 9.0 in this immediate series. We will have more coming out later, but this one kind of uh, sort of wraps up a, 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 a series of sessions that we've been going through with BPPM 9.0, but that by no means um, indicates that we, there won't be more. There will be a lot more coming. Um, the content, if you're not aware and you haven't attended one of these previously or, or looked at the materials, we record these sessions and post them at these websites that I've noted here. Uh, we also provide the PowerPoint presentations that you're seeing. And as Randy requested, please enter all of your questions into the Q&A window. We don't pay attention to the chat window, so if you enter something there, we're not going to respond to it. We capture the, the questions and answers and publish them as well at these website locations for you to review later as needed. Okay, so BPPM cloud management capabilities. What, what can we do here? How does BPPM fit in with cloud? First of all, we can monitor and manage all the different types of clouds from a high-level perspective, that meaning private clouds, public clouds, and even a hybrid type of implementation where an environment may be leveraging a public cloud and a private cloud. Um, the cloud technologies primarily that we interact with is you know, quite obviously BMC's Cloud Lifecycle Management Solution, also vBlock, um, VMware, including VMware guests, and is, if you've attended these webinar sessions and had experience with BMC, you're probably already aware that we can monitor uh, VMware, VMware environments through vCenter and monitor the ESX servers directly even if we need to. Um, and we also interact now with vCloud Director, um, and, and we're able to monitor vApps and VMs provisioned by vCloud Director as, as well as the cloud resources that are created and managed by vCloud Director. And that's not all. We also um, can interact with Amazon EC2. They're an elastic computing um, offering, as well as Force.com and Microsoft Azure environments. And at a high level, we, we monitor not only the nodes, the, the virtual nodes that are in the clouds, just like we would with any environment using BPPM, but we also specifically monitor the cloud infrastructure. Okay, so a little bit of terminology, and as we get further into this and look at some slides with diagrams on it, some of these terms will make even more sense if you're not already familiar with them. Uh, BMC's Cloud Lifecycle Management Solution, the rest of these slides I will refer to that as BMC's CLM solution just to kind of speed things up. That solution includes what are called pods, and pods are deployed into locations, and you can think of them as, as sort of segmented um, um, computing, um, segmented computing resources and so forth. There's also what are called network containers. There is also a control tier, or sometimes we refer to that as a control pod. And then there is also a management tier. The control tier is basically where the BMC CLM solution is actually installed and other BMC, major BMC uh, management components are installed. That will become clear in a couple of slides here. And then the management tier is actually the tier where you're managing, uh, that's being managed. It's the tier that contains the pods that house the virtual machines and whatnot. There's also a component in relation to BPPM called the data collection host. And that's a very specific deployment of our integration service node along with the ability and the appropriate knowledge module to connect to um, the, the uh, vCenter environment and, um, and, and actually monitor um, the ESX servers, the virtual nodes, and, and, and so forth through vCenter with a limited number of metrics. So it's very specific to monitoring just that type of environment. And when I say limited metrics, I'm referring to basic operating system type metrics and other utilization and resource type metrics that are associated with supporting virtualization in the VMware environment. So it's, it's not a full-blown type of monitoring capability with BTPM, although that can be um, facilitated. So after, even after deploying a basic monitoring capability with CLM and, and BPPM being part of that, you can come back later and, um, and go to a full monitoring uh, capability, turn on full monitoring capability that is with BPPM, and we'll talk about some things regarding that. 
Virtual Cloud Director, some terms there. VDC stands for Virtual Data Center. It's usually associated with an organization. And it's basically a container used to deploy VMware vApps into, okay? Um, it's created using resources that come from a particular or a selected provider virtual data center. And a provider virtual data center is basically a logical grouping of compute and storage resources uh, made up of a set of ESXi host systems and a set of one or more associated data stores. So that's some basic terminology. It's not all the terms that you may need to be aware of and so forth, but it's, it's certainly the major ones that you need to understand if you're not already familiar with BMC's CLM solution and, and or virtual cloud director um, and the virtual cloud capabilities that VMware provides. And so understanding these terms and moving forward, it'll start making a little bit more sense. So we're, we're going to talk first about BMC's CLM architecture and the BMC CLM uh, offering and how BPPM fits into it. And then we'll roll into virtual cloud um, offered by VMware after a few slides here. So at, at a very, very high level, looking at BMC CLM uh, solution, there is a workload tier that contains pods and so forth which in, 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 in the pods, the pods contain the uh, virtual machines that are being deployed within the cloud. And those virtual machines come and go based on tenants that may come in and, and uh, provision different services, make different service requests through the, the CLM portal. And the CLM portal and all the CLM, um, uh, most of the CLM architecture and so forth and, and BMC components as well as major components for BBPM run up in the control tier, okay? So a, a BMC CLM cloud is composed of one or more locations. Each location contains one or more pods. Each pod contains one or more network containers. And each network container contains one or more network zones. And regarding those zones, each zone can contain a load balancer, and a firewall for security and load balancing of workloads that exist within that zone. Okay. Now, additionally, sometimes there's a need to, to communicate from one pod to another, so each network zone can contain one or more networks, actually, and they can span network zones, network containers, and pods as necessary. They don't have to, but they can if necessary. A cloud tenant, meaning a, a user from a particular organization who would log into the front end of the CLM portal, um, they can be assigned one or more network containers so that they can get into the appropriate environments that they, can, that they need to work with and so forth. And through policies, a network container is selected based on the end user requesting a service. So when the end user or tenant logs in and they request a service, they just basically fill out the information they want in the, uh, the Cloud Lifecycle Management Portal, and the Cloud Lifecycle Management Solution provisions whatever uh, technology is necessary to support the service that they've requested, um, according to blueprints and so forth, into the appropriate network container or containers for them. Okay? And then we go about monitoring that with the BPPM solution. So first, when you go to install CLM, you've got the ability to also, with the CLM installer, install BPPM. And the components that, that would get landed from a BPPM perspective um, in, in that environment would be, they're depicted on the slides that you see here. So um, at the top here, there's a CLM, or excuse me, there's a B, BPPM central server specifically designed for CLM. And then there are child BPPM servers, also commonly referred to as LEAF servers, um, that would be deployed as well. You deploy, you know, however many is necessary for your environment. And as I talked earlier, I talked about this concept of a data collection host. That is basically a BPPM integration server um, with the appropriate processes, the integration service, the patrol agent, excuse me, the, um, the, the proactive net agent running on it, we would actually recommend having a patrol agent there as well. And then it may have additional patrol agents on it, or actually will have additional patrol agents on it for collecting data directly from virtual center. And as I mentioned earlier, 
this is limited monitoring. Um, it doesn't have to remain limited, but out of the box, this is what gets deployed as a data collection host. And again, it's just the, the, the vSphere KM basically running on an agent, and it has the ability to connect to vCenter and collect the data provided through VMware. And, and, and by default, we collect something like seven metrics out of the box. So it's a, a small number of metrics. And you might look at this from the perspective of service offerings. So this would be like a gold level service offering in a, in a scenario where you're providing gold, silver, gold, platinum, and so forth. It may be silver or gold. It's a, it's a low level type of, of offering. And again, we can extend that if necessary. Um, okay, so that's, that's what the, the, the environment looks like from a BPPM perspective. And the way it gets deployed into the CLM architecture is we deploy the BPPM central server as well as the child servers or leaf servers into the control tier. And from a, from a architecture perspective, that would be into the control pod. And then we can communicate, the, the, anything running in this pod can communicate across um, the backbone or a LAN to other pods. So this BPPM server up here that's shaded, shaded blue, its intention is to process data that's being collected from this other pod down here labeled as a payload pod. It's basically a pod within the managed tier. And this other pod over here, um, is another, quote, local payload pod that's connected to the same backbone um, and, and is in turn connected through the, through the network to the control uh, pod up here. So these two guys are basically physically in the same location in this particular scenario. And then we can also have another pod that's uh, distributed somewhere across the WAN, um, and, and a separate BPPM server here is set up and designated to process data and so forth that's collected from monitoring down here in, in this pod. And each one of these pods may have one or more data collection hosts in them, okay? And also you'll notice that um, up here in, in the control pod, we, other, we have other major BMC components. This is where the CLM server components would reside. This is also where the BMC's server automation um, um, components would also reside up here from an, a, an application and database, application server and database perspective with its corresponding agents um, also deployed out here in, in, in the appropriate nodes and so forth in these different pods. So that's how the BMC solution at a high level, how its architecture fits into the CLM architecture. And we would recommend that you follow a strategy very similar to what you see on this slide, where you have you know, a specific pod that's, that's set up for processing a, a specific tenant's um, environment and so forth, supporting a specific tenant's environment, be monitoring that and feeding that data up to its corresponding BPPM server. Um, and again, that's a child server. So each one of these has its own BPPM um, child server that's, that's processing the data from a monitoring perspective coming from these different tenant environments. Okay, and another way of looking this in a little bit more detail is you may have BPPM servers spread out even across the WAN, but they're still within the control tier. Um, and, are, and you may have multiple control tiers, actually, if you have a very large environment. Um, but the, the, the point is, is, is just another representation here of how we can deploy this out across an environment. We've got our, all of our data collection and managed nodes in these, these different pods, and they may be spread out over a WAN or even on the same um, subnet network or whatever. Uh, not, not subnet, but in, in the, off, hanging off the same backbone. Um, and we connect to our integration service nodes, as you see here, and then there are the data agents doing data collection, um, and this this is considered a data collection host here. In other words, it's it's one box. Typically, in most environments, it, it would be one virtual server or one virtual box that has all of these processes on it. And note that you can have again multiple patrol agents running on these boxes. Now, you could diverge from this if necessary uh, for scalability and management reasons and so forth. But this is the the basic implementation that gets deployed. Um, if you're deploying BPPM through the CLM installer. 
Okay, so what are some recommendations? What are the recommendations around BPPM in a BMC cloud lifecycle management environment? So these, most of these uh, points that we're going to go through on the next couple of slides here are, are pretty much specific to CLM, but in uh, in um, in concept they apply to other environments as well that are non CLM environments. Um, definitely, number one, if if um, you if you have any intention in the future of extending BPPM monitoring capabilities beyond the very basic monitoring that gets deployed with the data collection hosts in a CLM implementation and through the CLM installer, you, you definitely need to think about sizing and so forth. So plan for growth, plan for the, the total amount of monitoring that you intend to provide. Um, and, and this is kind of easy to, to, to deal with, actually. So if you're going back to the idea of a silver, gold, platinum type offering, um, the planning might be very simple. For your gold offering, you're going to have a certain sizing, and, and that's very straightforward. Um, for a, a, um, a platinum type offering that may in, involve all of the monitoring capabilities that BMC might provide, then obviously the sizing would be, need to be quite a bit larger. Um, so think in terms like that and definitely plan accordingly. Install the BPPM servers in the BMC CLM control tier or pod. Never install them out into the pods that have that, that will have um, virtual nodes that, that support a, a particular tenant's business and, and activities and so forth. Um, don't ever put a BPPM server out there. Always put it in the control tier or the, the control pod, as we sometimes call it. Install the integration service nodes and data collection hosts in the BMC CLM pods containing the virtual machines. So if you've looked at our previous webinars and so forth or attended them, you'll probably remember that we recommend putting the, the integration service nodes um, and, of course, the, the nodes that house things like remote monitoring and whatnot as close to the managed technology as possible, the actual technology that you're monitoring, that is. And so this is really just following the same concept. Install data collection nodes in the uh, in the BMC CLM pods containing virtual nodes, and that would include not only the data collection host, but also think in terms of uh, remote monitoring. Maybe you decide that you're going to provide more monitoring capabilities uh, beyond just what the out of the box data collection host provides, and you want to you want to stand up and deploy a um, a node that has patrol agents running on it that are doing remote monitoring um, across, you know, a, a variety of different VMs within a particular pod. Well, you would need a designated VM to support that as well, okay? And th that VM should be in, in installed into, into that same pod where um, the, the, the managed nodes are actually reside. Um, regarding, th there's an adapter that connects the B BPPM server to the C to CLM and gathers data, and we consume the topology information from CLM into the into the BPPM server. Okay, so there's some key things you need to note about enabling in that adapter. First, enable the CLM adapter only after all BPPM servers are deployed and actually operational, meaning they've been installed, their their basic configuration is done. Connectivity between them, from the child no nodes to the to the central server and so forth, is all established and validated and, and whatnot. You would not want to connect the adapter until all of those pieces are actually in place and operational. Yet you haven't started consuming data from CLM yet. Um, the BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management Adapter status should be persistent. Credentials used for invoking the BMC uh, CLM REST APIs must have cloud administrative privileges, and you should validate that before you actually enable the adapter as well. Um, the BMC CLM adapter can integrate with only one BMC CLM instance, okay? So um, basically what we're getting at, at there is the adapter um, on the, with, with, regarding the BBPM server can integrate with only one BMC CLM instance at a time. It's not a one-to-many kind of um, configuration. It's a one-to-one -one configuration. And we support BMC CLM 2.1 and later, so be aware of that as well. Now, I mentioned earlier that we consume cloud topology data into um, BPPM. 
and I, I talked about enabling the adapter and so forth. There's a command line, this uh, PW command in, in the BPPM server um, that's named PW full cloud op support command, okay? Before running that, before initiating that guy, you need to validate connectivity between different components that make up the, you know, this environment that you've already installed, and we recommend utilizing the NS lookup command to validate this. Um, and these are the these are at a minimum, okay? So definitely at a minimum, validate that the BBPM central server can communicate with the BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management uh, Platform Manager. And I would recommend that you do the NS lookup command from run the NS lookup command from both of these different servers, both of you know the different servers for each one of these scenarios. The central server also needs to have connectivity um, to and from the BMC pregnant child servers. Um, the, the, the data collection hosts need to have connectivity to the child servers. The data collection hosts would always connect to um, the, the uh, child servers and not connect to the central server. And the, the previous diagram that I had up showed that basically. And also validate that vCenter and the BBPM uh, data collection host can communicate with each other both ways, all right? Um, and then also validate the credentials again and ensure that the user credentials for, for the, the, um, the, the REST API configuration and so forth, as well as the connections, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the, the connection to, to uh, CLM has cloud um, admin role privileges. Now, incorporating existing BPP employ deployments into CLM, it, it, it's conceivable and it happens quite often that um, you may have a BPPM environment and you want to incorporate that into a CLM environment that's been installed after the fact. The, the way to do this, there's two main, one main, main thing that you need to think about here, make the, and that is to make the existing BPPM server a child server of the Cloud Lifecycle Management central server, and there's a specific process to go to, to do that that's well documented in the product documentation, so I recommend that you look that up in the docs. But um, it, it's important that you don't try to make that server a central server um, and whatnot. The way to pull it into a CLM environment is to make it a child server of the central server that is part of the CLM environment. Be aware that a resource pool CI is created when cloud consuming is initialized. So when you run that PW command I've got listed there, um, it, the process is going to end up creating a resource pool CI in BPPM, but there is no construct that has that name over in BMC CLM, so don't get confused with that, okay? And also, I've talked about installing BPPM and that it made the point that we can install it with CLM through the CLM installer. You also can install, install it separately and make it part of a CLM environment. So, you know, don't think that you have to, to run through that install process um, or, or that you're stuck with having to reinstall or anything like that. You can install it separately and then make it part of the CLM environment. So upgrading an existing CLM deployment to full BPPM capabilities. What are some things that we need to think about there? And what I'm talking about here is, is you, it's a scenario where you've already installed CLM, you included the BPPM capabilities when you ran through the CLM installer, and then at some point in the future you want to increase those monitoring capabilities beyond the, the very basic or silver level monitoring um, that we've talked about here. First, you need to evaluate and plan scalability for the increased quantity of managed nodes and the amount of data that you're going to be collecting. Um, and, and so that results typically in having to add new instances to the existing deployment, obviously. You can change hardware configuration of existing instances, so you could add additional CPU and RAM and so forth. Um, to the virtual machines and then restart the virtual machines so that they can scale um, to, to support the added load that you're introducing into the environment. Um, and this may involve not only the BPPM servers but also the data collection hosts and, and, and of course restart them. When you do that and you do a restart, you'll need to reapply the license for the, the BladeLogic um, agent. So be aware of that. Um, the, and this, this is a recommended order in which to do things also, by the way. 
So the next step would be to update the license on all the BPPM servers to enable full features because the, the out-of-the-box install with CLM that, that lands the BPPM components in the CLM environment, the license for that limits the amount of monitoring um, to, to what you're actually licensed for. It lim limit, limits it to the, the basic monitoring that I've described. Um, and then the next step after you've enabled the licensing, you would need to enable the data collection host to collect the complete set of metrics from the hypervisor. Um, and, and so out of, out of the box, the default base deployment, like I mentioned earlier, is only seven metrics. Um, and there's a, for a full deployment, there's actually a total of 75 metrics. So the next step would be to enable BMC's Atrium CMDB integration if it's not already enabled. Um, and then secondly, uh, or after that, enable the integration to BMC's Remedy Service Desk, okay? Um, and then there's some more steps to continue with this, you know, increasing to full, full capabilities with BPPM in the CLM environment. Consolidate views for enterprise and cloud, all right? Um, and, and the way you can do that is you would have a dedicated leaf child BPPM server for the enterprise infrastructure, meaning the, the enterprise infrastructure that's not part of the cloud that, you, that you're already monitoring, okay, can be brought in as, as a, a um, child server, which I've described earlier. Um, and then you can propagate the events from that node to the same central server that's used by the cloud infrastructure. So that's how you pull it all together. It's basically all pulled together up at the central server. The next step would be to expose only the BMC CLM portal data to tenants. You, you want to try to avoid having user tenants log into lower tier BPPM servers. And the reason for that is the BPPM servers don't really support multi-tenancy, yet the BMC CLM portal obviously does, and it does a good job of that. Now, if you have for some reason, you have a tenant that needs more granular information than what's displayed up in the uh, BMC um, CLM portal, then you can give them access to the BPPM servers. We don't particularly recommend that, but if it's an absolute must, you certainly can do that. And the way you would manage that is to set up the appropriate access control rights and whatnot per groups and so forth within the BPPM server. And we talked about how to uh, some best practices on doing that in um, a previous webinar that was re that regarded um, administration and so forth. Um, so th that gives those those tenants. It gives you the, the ability to, to provide con access control around tenants in the BBPM web UI, but keep in mind, as we mentioned earlier in the, in the previous webinar, that there is no administrative access control rights and so forth through the Java admin GUI for a BBPM server. And so next, we need to dig in and talk a little bit about um, vCloud resources before we, we start talking about how BPPM fits into a vCloud environment. Um, so this, this slide represents very high level architecture for how a, a vCloud environment is, is actually uh, laid out and so forth. You've got a, what's called a cell, and within that cell, you may have multiple provider virtual data centers. And within each provider virtual data center, there are organization or organizational data centers that are primarily allocated to a specific tenant each. So as you can see here, we've got virtual data center one is allocated for tenant one, and then data center two is tenant two and so forth. And these, guys, these, these um, organizational data, uh, virtual data centers are supported by various resource pools and you can note here that you may have, you could have a one-to-one -one correlation between a resource pool and a particular uh, uh, tenant's organizational uh, organization virtual data center, or and or they could share resource pools. Um, so so be be aware of that. That's how this basically is laid out. And then of course there's storage that's associated with each individual resource pool as well. So we, we monitor and manage this environment in a very similar way to how we deploy BPPM components into the BMC CLM solution for cloud management. 
Um, and so the way that works, a little bit, a little bit before we get into actually how it's deployed here, um, there's there's a component that's part of vCloud if you're not aware of it called vCloud Director. So there's a vCloud Director server here, um, and then there's a messaging component. It's called RabbitMQ, which is a messaging middleware um, component that allows us to 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 uh, mess collect data and so forth and and, and um, and messages and whatnot from vCloud Director through over to the BPPM central server. So the way BPPM interacts and connects to um, vCloud from, from a, um, a cloud topology, collect data collection, cloud consuming or topology consuming pr uh, perspective is the central server has a vCloud adapter on it. B BPPM central server that is has a vCloud adapter on it. It connects to uh, vCloud director, and then the data that we've requested and so forth is populated over into the BPPM server back to the to the adapter through this RabbitMQ middleware component. Okay, so that's that's how the components are actually connected together. And this isn't from a monitoring perspective necessarily. This is primarily from the perspective of consuming the cloud topology data from vCloud into the BVPM server. And from a high-level perspective, if you haven't seen it, um, the, the, the BVPM central server, the view for vCloud would look like this. You can see here there's a BMC provider virtual data center here, and within that provider virtual data center, we've selected a um, to look at some information on a particular organizational virtual data center and we can see some utilization metrics here and whatnot and also we can see the heat map over here indicating where we have problems in the environment and so forth so from a very high level that's what it looks like after the topology information and even and monitoring and so forth has been um, set up and, and, and we've collected that topology information into the uh, BPPM server from vCloud and of course there's drill down capability over here on um, within the BPPM server where we can see cloud resources, we can drill down into the particular provider VDC and various other provider VDCs and, and on into the actual um, organizational VDCs that, that reside within a provider VDC. Okay, so what are some do's and don'ts and, and so forth regarding deploying BPPM into a vCloud environment? Um, you would want to include the, excuse me, you want to include the, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. You want to include the uh, vCloud monitored objects in the scalability assessment for BPPM. And this would actually apply also to um, CLM and whatnot and, and, and all of the other cloud infrastructure monitoring capabilities that we provide. What I mean here is, the virtual data centers, the provider data center, data centers and so forth, virtual data centers within vCloud, we do some monitoring there. So you need to consider those in your total scalability assessment along with the actual um, virtual nodes that are supporting business and so forth within the cloud. So those, those are monitored objects just like the, v, the target VMs that you're monitoring in the cloud are monitored objects as well. So they, ultimately, the, all of the technology that you're being that you're monitoring should be part of your scalability assessment. Do not attempt to add or delete vCloud constructs within BPPM. Okay. Instead, allow that integration that I just described to synchronize with BPPM and populate the data from vCloud into BPPM. Also, if a BBPM child server is down, just be aware of this behavior. If you take a, a, a BBPM child server down for some period of time or it goes down for some reason and then you bring it back up, there will be a, a there, there's potentially a um, discontinuity between the data that's in vCloud and the data that's in the child server because the server was down, obviously, and the RabbitMQ process and so forth couldn't populate data over there. There is a synchronization task that will, or a synchronization process that will run according to a cleanup task that will resynchronize things for you. That task runs every 24 hours by default. Now you can adjust that, and there is instructions in the uh, product documentation on how you can go about adjusting that. Um, if a 
Also, uh, if the rabbit in queue process goes down, there's a notification task that will kick off every two hours to resync the data as well. And you can adjust that, that frequency. We recommend that you leave these frequencies where they are for most implementations, but if you needed to resync for some reason, um, you could set that, reset that value, let it run, and then set it back to the, to the default value if necessary. You wouldn't want to reduce these to something like, let's say, once an hour um, for the, the cleanup task. Instead of having it run every 24 hours, let it run once an hour. You wouldn't necessarily want to reduce it to, to a, uh, or, or, in, or increase the frequency to a, a level like that because you would impart an excessive amount of um, processing that doesn't need to be done. The cleanup task only needs to run if there's an issue like this. And the, the integration that I've described will keep the data up to date and synchronized on a regular basis as long as you don't have some kind of outage. Okay, so um, some other things that we need to think about here. Integrate the BPPM servers with Cloud Director after installing all the BPPM servers. So get the BPPM servers installed, make sure they're connected to each other, make sure that they communicate with each other and all of that kind of stuff before you actually integrate um, them to the vCloud Director. Also integrate both the child and the central servers, okay? and integrate the BBPM central server first. When you integrate the BBPM central server, there is quite a significant command line um, function here that does that for you. And, and this command line has many different arguments, as you can see. So it, it's a PW command with the full cloud op support option, and what you're connecting to here with a dash A it, it indicates that we're connect, connecting to vCloud. And you'll see here, I'm not going to read through all this, but as you kind of look through this, you'll see that we're specifying various protocols, various ports to connect to, and there's a number of different queues that are, that are comprised within the RabbitMQ um, component, okay? And so that's, that's what these AMPQ um, uh, um, arguments are actually related to here. And there's, there's a number of different cues and so forth that you need to be aware of here. So you've got to specify all this information accurately um, when you're connecting and integrating the BBPM central server into the vCloud director environment. I point this out because it's very important that you make sure that each one of these command line arguments is accurate. And this actually isn't every single command line argument. We've got a slide coming up that, that lists the different command line arguments, and they're also listed in the product documentation as well. Now, this uh, quite significant command line um, um, function here applies only to the BPPM central server. It does not apply to the child servers. You do specify, or you do run this command against the child servers, but you only run it in this mode. You just specifically state A-VCloud, and that's the only argument that you provide against the child servers. So you would definitely not want to run this full command with all these different arguments on it against one of the child servers. The full arguments are to only be applied to the central server. Okay, also, when you do this, plan for restart time when running the integration command. So this PW full cloud ops support command, when you run it after it's done all of its, its um, configuration and so forth, updating configuration data and whatnot, it's going to restart the J server on the BPPM server. It's also going to restart the RAID engine. Um, and it will restart the local proactive net agent that's running on the BBPM server. Okay, so it restarts all those processes, and that will take some time in some environment, most environments to come up, at least a minimum of around 15 minutes or so. Okay, so plan for that restart time. Okay, some other things to think about here. We strongly recommend that you use fully qualified domain names everywhere, and this applies to the configuration within vCloud Director, okay, as well as the configuration within the Patrol vSphere KM UI. And so what, what does that look like? Well, within vCloud Director, when you're specifying the vCenter name, as you see here, we're strongly recommending that even if you're not using BMC's uh, solution, we, we'd recommend that you have a fully qualified name here instead of just a short name, all right? 
And then obviously we, we also strongly recommend when you're configuring the Patrol KM, as I stated, that the host name for a vCenter that we're connecting to here be specified with a, a fully qualified domain name as well. And obviously they would need to be the same here. All right, so um, if, if that's not possible, in, in, in a scenario where that may not be possible is where you've already deployed Patrol, you've been monitoring the uh, vCenter environment with Patrol for some period of time, and you configured that with a with a short name and not the fully qualified name. By doing that, you've created a device and so forth up in the BBPM server that has that short name on it. And it may not necessarily be easy for you to just switch that over to the fully qualified ma domain name because you run the risk of creating a duplicate device and things like that. Okay, so if, if you if you're in that predicament, you've got that situation to deal with, then we would recommend that you go back into vCloud Director and use the name the short name in vCloud Director instead of the fully qualified name. The, the key here is that those, those names basically need to match, okay? Otherwise, you'll run into some issues with that. All right, so the, the, the PW command that I described earlier um, it has a lot of different, um, op, 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 <coughs> excuse me, a lot of different arguments on it. Okay, and this, this is just a list of all the arguments. I'm not going to go through every one of them. I'm just going to point out a few of them. You'll notice some things here. The, the host name of the AMQP, uh, that's basically a host name where M, MQ, RabbitMQ is running. Okay, um, And then there's a username that you've got to get here for connecting to that, the RabbitMQ middleware. Um, there's also a vendor queue. There's, so there's various queues that you need to be aware of regarding the configuration of RabbitMQ before you can sit down and, and, and run this configuration and actually integrate BPPM to vCloud Director. You really need to be very, uh, very thorough and methodical and make sure that you capture all of this information accurately. And this isn't all of it. There's another slide here that has even more um, items on it that you need to be aware of. Okay, and it, it supports SSL um, communications here, so we, we can be secure, we can set up a secure connection and utilize certificates and those kinds of things as well. So if, if, it's, if RabbitMQ is instrumented for SSL, then obviously these are things that you need to think about. And you can see here the default settings and some various examples and whatnot. Um, and, and some of these have no default settings. So for example, with SSL out, out of the box, we're assuming that, there is, that SSL is not actually configured. But be aware that it might be and you need to check those kinds of things. Okay, so we talked about cloud tenants a little bit earlier, and, and if you're familiar with BMC CLM solution and, and other cloud um, management solutions and whatnot, um, you're fully aware of the concept of tenants and, and so forth. And as, as, we, as we stated in previous webinars, and I've mentioned on this webinar, the BMC BPPM solution is not really tenant aware. Okay, There's, there is some tenant configuration capability within the um, central management administration component, all right? But as far as within the monitoring uh, component and, and logging in and so forth, it's not really tenant aware. And this, this discussion talks about how to deal with tenants when you're integrated to CLM um, with, with BPPM. So the, the service provider, um, connection here is actually able to, a service provider is actually able to connect in and look at reports that are part of and provided by the BBPM reporting component. So there is a tenant aware uh, notion within BBPM reporting. So each tenant can log in and, and generate their own reports and whatnot from a tenant perspective. And there's the, the ETL, the extract translate load capability from the uh, from, from the Oracle database here, it has the ability to go in and um, collect data based on a per tenant basis. All right, um, and so when you look at this in a little bit more detail, there is tenant data, although it may not be necessarily segmented as tenant data, but there's tenant data that can be monitored and managed across multiple tenants and brought into a specific BPPM server and a BPPM server database, basically, okay? Um, and then, then as the data is propagated over into BMC's uh, BPPM reporting component, 
it, it can have the tenant information associated with it, and then when the tenants log in, they can see just their data. So although we recommend that the tenants don't log into BBPM, the BBPM server specifically because it doesn't readily support tenant capabilities, tenant segmentation, and so forth, they still have the ability to visualize the reports, and, and we still support tenant-aware capabilities within uh, the reporting component. All right, so be aware of that. Um, and and when you when you integrate BPPM with CLM, um, you want to administer the tenants within the the BBPM or excuse me the BMC CLM environment, um, and don't don't try to administer them over in BPPM. Let the integration manage that for you. Okay. Now some general cloud recommendations. Uh, we've talked about CLM, BMC CLM solution. We've talked about vCloud and vCloud Director and whatnot, and specific points on on the, for those particular environments. These re the rest of these recommendations apply to basically any cloud type of environment. We strongly recommend that you would establish a silver, gold, and, and platinum type standards. You don't have to use those names. You don't necessarily have to follow that ideology exactly, but it's really critical that you establish standards and follow those standards. And the main reasoning for this is that a cloud environment can be extremely dynamic. And if it's changing a lot, you're deploying uh, services through the cloud, you know, tenants log in, they deploy services for themselves through through the cloud management solution such as CLM or vCloud, um, that that uh, configuration can, can can come and go quite rapidly. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to manage monitoring if you're following following very strict standards. Also, all of the previous best practices regarding BPPM apply. Just because you're implementing in a cloud environment doesn't mean that you know scalability that we've talked about in the past and how to connect integration service nodes and so forth to um, a BPPM server and create um, um, create the um, adapters and whatnot if you're using full monitoring capabilities, all of those types of, of um, recommendations that we've provided in the past still apply. Install the BPPM servers always in a, quote, management tier, or think of that as a control pod, a control tier, uh, basically a, a, a designated tier within the cloud that's for management solutions. Install integration service nodes in the managed tiers, like I've already described, basically managed zones, managed pods, or wherever where the guest VMs reside. Install data collection nodes in the managed tiers um, as well. So and I've already hit on this, but it's just a reiteration to emphasize it. Uh, examples would be the BMC CLM data collection hosts, uh, remote OS monitoring, specific nodes with patrol agents on them that are doing remote monitoring. Um, and so forth with, within a particular cloud. Those, those types of nodes should also be installed as close as possible to the actual nodes they managed and preferably within the same pods um, or, or um, organizational data centers, virtual data centers in a vCloud type of environment. If collecting data for, directly from an ESX host, um, ensure that the host name has a domain name and is a fully qualified domain name. Um, Leverage BPPM central management and administration. The reason for this is in, in CMA within the BPPM server, you have the ability to set up monitoring policies and follow, thereby follow a standard very easily. And this also helps ease administration and, and basically automates the application of monitoring policies to the appropriate nodes based on how the, the patrol agents are configured and so forth when you deploy them out into, into the actual managed virtual nodes. Um, it's very, very advantageous to leverage this capability in a cloud environment and also to keep it simple. Also be aware that with BBPM 9.0 Service Pack 1, we've included the ability to uh, import basically patrol agent rule definitions into CMA as policies. So you can create your rules through patrol, a patrol console, and this is primarily getting at full monitoring. It's not, not th these concepts I'm describing right now don't really apply to the, the basic monitoring that the data collection host provides. 
It's, it's in the case where you're in, in you're using full monitoring uh, capabilities with BBPM in a cloud environment. So you, you now, because of SP1, you can now create rules in Patrol or Patrol Configuration Manager and then import them into CMA as policies and then apply those policies appropriately to the various um, patrol agents that are de deployed in the environment. This helps eliminate the need to deploy a patrol console into the cloud, um, and it, it kind of streamlines the process and whatnot. So um, you don't need to have a patrol console or, or a uh, patrol configuration manager component deployed out into a pod somewhere in the managed environment. Install or upgrade to the latest BPPM releases, okay, or BPPM release, excuse me. And some Amazon recommendations. I mentioned earlier in one of the sli early slides that we have a component that um, can monitor. It's basically a KM that can monitor the, the Amazon environment. We also can obviously deploy monitoring of VMs within an Amazon cloud, okay? When you do that, there's some specific recommendations we've got here. Install the integration service nodes on dedicated VMs within the Amazon cloud. Use a static IP address for integration service nodes. So, so those integration service nodes that get deployed in the Amazon cloud should absolutely have a static IP address assigned to them. Also, assign a unique alias host name for each V managed VM in the cloud. If you don't do that, we have found that you'll have issues with the host name of the particular VMs populating properly up into the BPPM environment. Okay, and this alias, alias host name, it's basically a patrol agent configuration rule, if you're not familiar with it, that tells the agent to publish its host name as whatever alias that you define. You, you name it whatever you want, okay? And it will publish its host name upstream into BPPM as that name that you designate. Um, so, so be aware of that tip there. If you don't follow that recommendation, you're likely to have host name problems up in the BPPM server. Now, cloud environments are very dynamic, or they can be very dynamic. Um, and that, that thereby can introduce significant quantities of monitored objects that, that change dynamically and change rapidly. Um, the volume of changing data in a, in a BPPM solution must be managed appropriately in this kind of scenario. So out of the box, a BPPM server will automatically delete objects that have no data collected for them for at least seven days. Um, and the configuration, when, when, when the BBPM server is landed by the CLM installer, okay, that particular configuration of the BBPM server will maintain data for two, maintain objects that have no data collected for them for up to two days. And if no data has been collected after two days, then it begins deleting them. Um, and that's important because we want these, these, um, managed objects that are no longer in use anymore to be automatically deleted if, if there's no if they're not out there anymore. We're not collecting any data against them anymore. Therefore the assumption is that they're actually not in use anymore and for whatever reason haven't been deleted from the BBPM environment. Uh, we would recommend that you do not increase this this uh the number of days here. Keep it down to like two days. Um, also, allocate resources to accommodate currently monitored objects and objects marked for deletion. Okay, so although an object um, has a, a device or whatever, an instance and so forth, hasn't been, data hasn't been collected for it, it still is, is a, an object that's sitting in the BBPM server database and has to be accounted for from a performance and um, scalability perspective. It takes up space and that kind of thing. Um, also, we recommend that you would leverage the health and performance monitoring reporting capabilities within BPPM. And there's, there's self-monitoring as well that we've talked about in previous webinars, so we strongly recommend that you leverage those capabilities in a CLM environment and and or any cloud environment simply because of the dynamic nature of a cloud environment keeping tabs on the performance of the BPPM server and its components becomes even more important and last section I want to go through here is just to point out that we provide information on how 
constructs in the cloud, BMC CLM cloud environment are mapped to BPPM classes, okay? So, for example, a pod within the CLM environment is mapped to the BMC concrete collection class, okay? And the unique class attribute for it is this collection type, which is set equal to pod. Now, I'm not going to read through all of these, but I want you to be aware of this and that this information is available. Um, another example here, very you know, specific and important part, is, is the network containers that we've talked about. That also maps over to the class called BMC Concrete Collection, and its collection type is, is network container. So pretty simple and easy to understand there. Just be aware of this, and if, if you're not you know, familiar with it, I would, I would read through these, these mappings and become familiar with it. This is basically mapping um, CLM, you know, the, the, the constructs from CLM, in other words, the CLM major components over to BPPM classes. But that's not all the mapping that we do, okay? So there's attribute mapping as well. So, for example, a reconciliation ID is mapped over through the, this Get Re Reconciliation ID retriever, and the actual attribute on in the BPPM uh, server is the MC underscore UD ID. So it, it's it's basically a a global unique identifier is the intent of what this guy is to ensure that we've got the we have a one to one match here between. Um, the reconciliation ID associated with, an, with a, um, a CI over in, in CLM and the appropriate CI within the BBPM server from a service monitor, service, service modeling perspective. Okay, token ID matches directly over to token ID and so forth. So those are the mappings for the attributes, and then component aliases also have a mapping. Okay, so a component alias for a pod maps over to uh, an alias that basically looks like this. It's BMC underscore concrete collection colon, and then whatever the token ID is for that particular pod. So that's how we associate the appropriate aliases and then can tie the, the appropriate events and so forth to the appropriate pod and alarm on that if necessary. Any other alias construct that you don't see in this list here is basically it, it, it basically gets the reconciliation ID, okay? So instead of having this designation of BMC underscore concrete collection, you know, um, colon and then the token ID, um, something else that's not listed in this list here would, would get just the reconciliation ID. Um, and then last, the way relationships map over is the virtual guest is in a target zone, you know, how is it associated with a particular target zone? That's based on a relationship that's name is VM in zone. And the same concept from a container perspective. So how is a virtual guest associated with a particular container? You know, what relationship makes that happen over on um, the BPPM server? That's a VM in container relationship and so forth. Okay, so now the last topic here um, is, is cloud infrastructure monitoring. Obviously, we monitor the nodes that are stood up in a cloud, meaning the VMs that are providing business service capabilities and so forth, just like we would in an enterprise environment. But we also monitor the cloud infrastructure itself as well, and that's very, very important, and that's, that's a great capability that BPPM has. Um, Part of this is, you know, BPPM becomes part of the cloud itself as well, so we need to monitor the monitor, and we delivered a monitor the monitor KM, and we provided some uh, best practices on that in a previous webinar. Um, and that, that KM is able to discover whether or not it's running on a BPPM server or an integration service node and monitor accordingly. We also monitor vSphere, and if you've been, you know, working with um, – our, our knowledge modules for monitoring, our knowledge module, I should say, for monitoring vSphere that connects to vCenter, you'll be aware of some of the things we monitor there, such as um, utilization, you know, in, in an ESX, on an ESX server and those kinds of things, which um, the, server, the ESX server itself is, is a cloud-supporting technology. 
Um, so it's very important to monitor that as well. And we have various metrics that we automatically monitor out of the box for that guy. There's various metrics that we also monitor in a vCloud environment. Okay, I haven't listed all of these capabilities here, but if you look at our our knowledge modules and so forth for that, you'll you'll see that we we pick up and monitor quite a bit of utilization and resource metrics, and, and certainly the very important and key ones are, are monitored by DTPM there. Um, we also monitor vBlock, okay, and there's a knowledge module for vBlock that includes monitoring applications, OS, um, um, physical and virtual hosts, obviously, the resource pools within vBlock, the chassis within that makes up part of vBlock, network switch, and there's more, okay, so, so be aware of that capability. Um, and then for Amazon, there, we have an, uh, an Amazon EC2 um, KM, basically, and it'll monitor block store data, um, load balancing information, relational database services that make up part of the EC2 environment. Simple notif It also provides a, a monitoring for the simple notification servers that are within uh, Amazon's EC2 offering, uh, simple queue service, and the Elasti cache as well. And for vForce, there's also a vForce KM where we monitor data storage usage, file storage usage, status of user licenses, which could be very handy as well, um, and, and API call usage and whatnot. And we also have a, a KM for Microsoft Azure. And then, of course, depending on you know what all you've deployed in your environment, um, let's suppose you're using BMC's Cloud Lifecycle Management Solution. Well, quite obviously, Remedy's AR system is a very key component of that, as well as BMC's server automation um, solution is, is a very key component of BMC's CLM offering. And we, we provide KMs for monitoring both of those components as well. So, so be aware of that if you're not. And really the takeaway on this is that you leverage those self-monitoring or cloud infrastructure monitoring capabilities that we provide. And with that, pretty much ends the, uh, the webinar for this session. We very much appreciate you attending. Hope you found this useful. And um, we look forward to providing the next set of webinars for you guys. Randy? Great. Thanks, Hudson. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending today. Um, looks like we'll give you back about 15 minutes to your day. Um, I believe we've answered all the questions um, for today. But um, again, after this, um, you will get a link when you close the WebEx on the community site. We'll take you to the community site. Be sure to check this in the next few days for the recording. We will post that up there as well as the materials and the Q&A. And again, thanks for joining, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar series. Good day. And that, will, that will conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining us.